case. No lunch. Two hours with the Chamber of Commerce, three hours with the mayor, which leaves very little time to drink and be merry, to say nothing of eating. Well, darling, you can do all three at the Marling's party. Peter Childs is catering. Oh, no, not Crab Rangoon again. I can't decide which is worse, his food or him. Why does he always have to cater these parties? Well, he's very in, very in. Maybe we'll be lucky. There might not be any food left. We're late enough. Oh, Mac, no. Looks like we're right on time. Not another robbery. Not tonight. Wouldn't be so bad if I wasn't always invited. This is an outrage. Yes, sir. No, I shall issue a formal complaint. Yes, sir. Mr. Merriam, are you the decorator of this house? That is correct. And that includes the installation of the wall safe? I arrange for everything. I will not tolerate interference. I can't even bear a suggestion. Yes, sir, but I would like to ask you a few questions about the installation of the wall safe. Do these look like the hands of a laborer? I arranged for its purchase. I did not install it. What do you mean? Thank you, sir. Why didn't he? You can get dressed now. Uh, have you have you seen this one? Uh, give me a finger. I call this my one hand appendectomy. Oh, well, thank you, doctor. Any time. Oh, good evening, Commissioner. Good evening, right. Mrs. McMillan. Well, sir, I suppose that you can tell. I can tell. Same pattern? Same pattern. I was also checking the guest list. Same list? Same list. What's with your police, Commissioner? I can't go to a party in San Francisco without stripping. You object to that? I think some people would be above suspicion. Who's he? Edmund Lake, Matador, amateur. Oh, that explains it. You know, when I got here, he was chasing a redhead around with a cape saying that he wanted her ears for a trophy. Well, if I know Lake, that wasn't the part of her he was after. There's Frances. I'm going to talk to her for a minute. Listen, sir, we've checked all the guests and managed to insult most of them in the process. Mm -hmm. Francis, I'm so sorry. How's Carter taking it? Well, you know Carter. He can't bear to lose anything. Once a year, he makes me take an inventory of everything in the house. <laughs> Francis, Carter, we'd like to ask you a few questions, if you're up to it. I'm not up to it. I may never be up to anything ever again. It was a terrible party. Even before Francis insisted on opening the safe. Now, why did you open the safe? To show off her diamond. Why else? Well, he never lets me wear it, so at least I can show it off to a few friends. But when you opened the safe, the diamond was gone? But the case was there, but the diamond was gone. How many others know the combination of the safe? He's the only one. Well, I don't know why anybody would attempt a theft right in the middle of a party full of people. Our thief likes nothing better than performing before a crowd. It's part of his style and signature. This is the worst evening of my life, Francis, the worst. Peter, I thought you catered the Parkins party. They were burgled after dinner. Would you care for hors d'oeuvre, Mrs. McMillan? No, thank you. Commissioner, I believe you even missed them. Yes, we did. The worst evening in my entire life. Francis, I'm going home. The worst evening in his life. <laughs> Come on, Aunt Sally. I want to show you something, and I want you to tell me that it's wonderful. I didn't know you had anything left. Oh, he only took the diamond. Just a teeny little thing. <laughs> oh. What do you think of it? Well, uh, I like it. I don't understand it, but I like it. Oh, I don't understand it. Carter hates it because he doesn't understand it. But I don't think you have to understand something to love it. Don't you agree? Yes, I do. In this case, I do. I like it very much. You stay here. I'm going to introduce you to the sculptor. John Thomas. John Thomas. I want to introduce you Sally McMillan. This is John Thomas Clark. How do you do? I was just admiring your work. It's always a pleasure to meet someone who does. I can see that gleam in your eye, John Thomas. Let me caution you. Don't propose anything unlawful. Sally's married to our police commissioner. I must get back to uh, dear old Carter. <laughs> so, you really like my mobile? Yes, I do very much. Frances doesn't understand it, you know. She says she loves it, but she doesn't understand it. 
I really prefer Carter's attitude. He says he hates it. That's because he understands it. Well, you know, I've always been fascinated by mobiles. The thing that I don't understand is how they're done. You really must uh, come by my studio one day. I'll show you exactly how it's done. I'd love to. John Thomas? I, I think that woman is calling you. Where? I have a little trouble with my vision. Oh, really? You'd never know it from your work. Oh, uh, it's an asset. I can only see one woman at a time. You've been here all afternoon installing that hateful mobile. Now, please, can we not stay all night? Matthew hates my mobile. That's because she understands it. Uh, Mrs. McMillan, I'd like you to meet Eolanthe Sims. Lanthe, Mrs. McMillan is interested in art. Well, you've never introduced me to a woman who wasn't. <laughs> Come on, John, let's go. I mean, uh, the whole night has been a flop from beginning to end, and I've been absolutely assaulted by a policeman. Uh, first, go over and tell Frances that you had a good time and tell her that you're sorry about her diamond. Well, I had a terrible time, and I'm not sorry about her diamond. As a matter of fact, I think it was the high point of this whole disastrous evening. Then lie to her. You know how you love to do that. The insurance investigator checked the safe before the party began, sir, and he says that the diamond was still there. Did you investigate the investigator? Yes, he's all right, sir. No, the diamond had to be taken by somebody who was at the party. I mean, six robberies in seven months? You're right, sir. We're dealing with a master burglar who loves to perform in public. All right, let's run down the list again. Fats Lieberman. Still in San Quentin. Masanti. Still dead. It always leads right back to the Dutchman. Right he's the only one who can operate in this manner. Yes, but, sir, no one has heard from the Dutchman in the last 10 years. Well, we're hearing from him now, I'll bet you. How many of these people were at those other parties? Well, by my accounting, about 65. It's the favorite after-dinner entertainment of the black tie circuit, only they're laughing less and less. I really didn't need to hear that. Well, you're lucky, Commissioner. At least you won't have to be here in the morning when the chief has to face the mayor and the press. Would you rather be in Palm Springs, facing a national convention of police commissioners? Darling, you'll have to face them when you get back anyway. I really didn't need to hear that, either. Good night, Enright. Good night. Have a good trip. You sure you want to play golf your first day here? You're going to play golf, aren't you? Yeah, but you hate golf. Oh, but I love you. Anyway, everybody plays golf in Palm Springs. It's very in. Boy, it sure is pretty down there. King of ah, you're looking good. Oh, Freddie, I'd like you to meet my wife, Sally. This is Freddie O'Neill. So you're the little lady that nailed him, huh? I hate to tell you how many tried. I'd hate to tell you what they're missing. Nice to meet you, champ. No, just ex-champ now. Now I'm strictly a golfing buddy. Hey, there's somebody wants you to meet. June, come here. Mac! Hey, it's great to see you uh, again. How are you? Oh, fine. Uh, 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 huh? uh you... Remember my wife, Sally? Oh, sure, Mac. Whatever you say. Uh, have you, you got a game? With it? Well, well, why don't we make it a foursome? Yeah, fine, check I'll the starter. I'll with the starter. <laughs> hey, Alan, bring him over here, will you? How long are you going to be here, Freddie? Oh, for a week. At least that's what the man says. What man? Uh, Boris, the used car king. Oh, you work for him? Well, in, in a manner of speaking, I golf with him. Oh, he's your friend. No, I wouldn't give him the honor of calling him my friend. I don't think I'm following this conversation. Well, haven't you ever heard of a golf bum before? 
I know a tennis bum. Is that the same thing? Well, well, something like that, yeah. Except usually tennis bums have been champs at tennis. Now, a golf bum can have been a champ at anything. I'm a boxing champ who works the golf circuit. Works it? Yeah, that's right. I go from watering hole to watering hole, wherever a guy's willing to pick up the tab, for a weekend or a week. He gets to introduce the champ as his golfing buddy, and I get to stay in the best hotels, plus a little cash on the side. I do all right. Oh. <laughs> it isn't as degrading as it sounds, really, sweetheart. I'm a trophy to them, I know that. But they need a trophy, and I need the bread. We're all set. Be off time. Oh. Oh. You still a big knocker? Well, we'll see. Oh, okay. Sounds like hustle talk to me. <laughs> Listen, uh, June and I'll give you three strokes aside. We're just at the end of nine, maybe $20 mass Good. Okay, Sally. Boy, that was fabulous. Well, I hope mine goes there. There's nothing lonelier than the game of golf. Would you believe she's been taking lessons? Not only that, she's improved. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've been reading about that jewel thief of yours. Sounds like you got yourself quite an operator. Yeah, he's good, all right. Have you been able to trace any of the loot? We checked every known fence. All the diamond cutters were just about decided. He's cutting them himself. All right, could be. Nice, Freddy. <laughs> Very nice. That's my partner. Okay, Sally, sock it to him. That just right. You told me look down, I look down. Don't take your eye off the ball, I didn't take my eye off the ball. I kept my arm straight. I think Sally ought to take an axe with her in there. <laughs> you know, thinking about the way your thief loves to perform at parties, he kind of reminds me of the Dutchman. Remember him? Yeah. Who's the Dutchman? One of the biggest jewel thieves in Europe. Till Interpol made it too hot for him. What's he look like? No one's ever even seen a photo of him. Well, I saw him once. You did? Yeah, it was on my triumphant European tour. I remember thinking he looked so young to be doing so well. You saw him, huh? Yeah. Would you recognize him if you saw him again? Well, I think so. I think I'll pay my wife a visit. Right, see you on the green.
Sally. Oh, Mac, you're gonna love it here. It's so secluded. Here, let me show you. You better stand a little closer. I am standing closer. You can't get any closer. Well, a golf pro always does when he teaches me. I pay for that? Darling, it's worth it. I couldn't even get into the trees before he began. Standing so close. Right. Okay, now look. Mm -hmm. Like that, see? Oh, I get it. Sally. Yeah? You know how you've always wanted to show off the new house? Mm-hmm. Well, how would you like to give a party? I mean, a really posh party. Invite the prominent. All 65 of them and their diamonds. What are you up to? Oh, nothing. Oh, nothing. Freddie thinks he might be able to identify the Dutchman. You're kidding, Freddie. Uh, excuse me, have you seen an extra ball around here? No, we haven't. Oh, okay. Do you think he was listening? I'm gonna talk to Freddie about the party. I'll be right back. Okay, I'll be here. Oh. How's Sally? Oh, she's having a wonderful time. Say, Freddie. We'd like to give you a party in San Francisco. Invite some of our well-jeweled friends. The kind of a party that someone like the Dutchman couldn't resist. Are you free? Sounds like a ball. Mac, look out! Look out! My wife uh, just got out of the rough. Hey, Freddie. You're really gonna love San Francisco. Yeah? I want you to know you can change your mind at any time. Oh, don't worry about me, baby. I've been missing the ring. I'm ready for a little action. <laughs> that about does it, Commissioner. Yeah. Sure does. Thanks. You're welcome. See you in the shower. OK, baby. Oh, champ, I've been looking all over for you. Oh, hi, Boris. I ran into a buddy. Yeah? Well, I got a couple of buddies that are just dying to meet you. So get dressed and make it quick. Sorry, Boris. After we get through here, my friend wants me to have a drink with him. Look, I don't care what your friend wants. I'm the one who's footing the bills around here, and it's what I want. And I want you to get it on down to the clubhouse and meet these two guys, champ. Hey, we can have our drink later on, Freddy. No, we'll have it as planned. Get lost, Boris. Get yourself another champ. Now, don't you make the mistake of trying to knock on my door later. I never knocked on your door in the first place, Buster. You did all the knocking. There goes your meal ticket. Who's hungry? <laughs> Since when you start hanging around with police commissioners, Freddy? Oh, well, Mac wasn't always one. He just got to be one somewhere along the line. Uh huh? How come you? Well, well I've met a lot of people in my time, and I got a memory for faces. Oh, I got to tell you, Boo, that's the worst massage I ever had. How do you keep your job? Just another pretty face. Oh. Okay, Johnny, take your breaks now. Right. Who is Joan, Freddy? Well, I thought you knew her. She sure seemed like she knew you. <laughs> That's always happening to me. I'm forever reminding people of someone they think they know. Just hope we didn't talk too much about the Dutchman in front of her. Can she be trusted? Well, I hope so. She's the daughter of an L.A. police commissioner. Oh, that you. I didn't think so, but that would indicate yes. The sooner I get you into police custody, the better I'll feel. makes me nervous, but today I find it very soothing. I usually find it soothing, too, but I wish that somebody would tell me what the rush is all about. 
It's important to get Freddy to San Francisco as quickly and as safely as possible, that's all. That's all. You're, you're telling me that's all, but I know there's more to it. The reason you're telling me that's all is because you don't want to frighten me. That's right. Because when I do tell you, it does frighten you. Somebody's trying to kill us. No. Well, I feel better already. Somebody's trying to kill me. Mac? You're frightened. Well, why would anybody want to kill Freddy? The Dutchman? Look at that jerk, will you? Miles and nothing, and he's crowding us. Hey, Red Baron, whoever you are, you're crowding the airline, watch it. He really intends to get me. See the Red Baron. Maybe we lost him when we went through those clouds back there. Mike, that was first class. How many lessons did you have? Six. You did that with six lessons? That's wonderful. You haven't heard what number seven was. How to land. Hello? Hello, anyone? Mayday, Mayday. Come in, anyone. I love her around. You're killing me. <laughs> You came to just in time for lesson number seven. How do you feel? Not good. You feel strong enough to land it? I think I'm about to black out again. Before you black out, can you tell me how to land this? I can't. Call the control tower for instructions. I can't. The radio's out. Sprung a gas leak, too.
Jesus. Here, Sally. Read me the checklist. The checklist? The checklist. Read the checklist. Before starting engines, before taxing, before taking off. That's the pre-flight check. Read me the part about landing. Climb, cruise, before landing in range. Oh, here it is. OK. Before landing, gear down locked. Gear down. <laughs> Locked. Green light visual. Green light visual. High press, what's that? Uh, hydraulic pressure. Oh, oh. Uh, gear and systems. Pressure's okay. Mixtures, auto rich. Full rich, okay. Prop controls, low pitch. Prop control, low pitch. Wow, you got that good. Uh, flaps one quarter down. Flaps, one quarter down. Uh, no smoking sign on. Oh, Sally. You said to read the list. It's right here on the list. All right, Sally, that completes it. Hold tight, everyone. What's that? Red light. The landing gear is coming back up. I must have hit the switch when I set the flaps. Okay. Landing gear down. Green light on. Number seven. Francisco. Not quite. Now listen, uh, the commissioner should be back in about two hours, so you better take a look at this group of characters one more time. Okay, I'll get right on it, Sarge. Yes, Ann. It's the commissioner on line four. Thank you. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. What? You landed where? You landed the airplane. But wasn't that dangerous, sir? I will. Goodbye, sir. Ann? 
I want a heli ambulance to Yorba Linda to pick up a wounded pilot and the commissioner's party. I'm going to need six men to meet them at the San Francisco airport. I want a car for myself, and I want four men to go to the Hotel Taylor and make security preparations. Yes, sir. He landed it himself. Now, what about the plane? All we know is that it was a stolen plane, sir, and that they deserted it in the desert. Well, it ain't much, but it's safe. <laughs> sure, baby, that's what my manager said when he arranged my last fight. You mean with that kid called Clay? Right. Well, I'll try not to lead you into a mismatch, Freddy. <laughs> Come on in, right? We got some shopping to do. What a marvelous dinner. Here. Try this on for dessert. What is it? Oh, Mac! That's gorgeous. Fits perfectly. You've never done anything like this before. Thank you. Thank you. Except you can't keep it. It goes back after the party. I know. It's just that you've never done anything like this before. I just, well, oh, excuse me, back later. Oh, Mildred, come here and see what Mac bought me. Wow, what a rock. What'd that set you back, Commissioner? Fifty big ones, Mildred. Fifty thousand? But be careful whom you tell it. We wouldn't want a visit from our local jewel thief. Might be a little embarrassing. Got the message, Commissioner. Say, what's the occasion? I didn't miss your birthday, did I, Mrs. McMillan? No occasion, Mildred. Oh, you did something that bad, huh, Commissioner? I just happened to love my wife. Well, sure, don't we all? Five, four, four three, three, two. Contact, she's calling Agnes. <laughs> then in alphabetical order, Beatrice, Clarissa, Dot, and Elsa. <laughs> It'll be inside the back door of every home on the hill before midnight. Oh, would you like to look at our list, how it's coming along so far? Mm-hmm. Peter Childs, what's he doing on this list? You know I hate his food. Darling, he's the in The in -cater, yes, I know. You know, he could be the Dutchman. You know, he's been at all the parties, and he's always the first to arrive and the last to leave. Well, somehow I can't see the Dutchman slaving over a hot kitchen stove. You've never made crab ragoon. It takes a very light touch. Okay, I'll put him down, right into the surgeon who does a knot with one hand. Do you think he could be the Dutchman? That's a possibility. One of the things we know about the Dutchman is he's very adept with his hands, as is the surgeon. Well, then you better put down the matador. Remember what Sergeant Enright said about how handy he was with a cape. Everybody's suspect. This party is getting exciting. I'm going to have to go out and look for a dress to go with my ring. Well, I can't very well go to a party with John Thomas Clark and his mistress without looking special. And that's another one, Clark. Think of the dexterity needed to make those mobiles. Oh, that's right. Ridiculous. You're just suspicious of everyone who wants to give me lessons. Yeah, right. Lessons. Oh, I'm booked for a golf lesson tomorrow. Is it. I'm going to bed before I say something I might regret. It's early. You uh, don't have to come to bed if you don't want to. Darling, I'm not going to take golf lessons to follow you all around the course and then not follow you to bed. <laughs> Straight back. Well, I think that's all for today, Mrs. McMillan. Tell me, Buck. Am I getting any better? No. I'll see you on Thursday. Yeah, thanks a lot. All right. Good. Good, Ms. Wilson. Fine. Ms. McMillan? Yeah. It was found on the windshield of her car, sir. 
We also found the car that they used. It was stolen. No fingerprints. We're checking with our underworld contacts, sir, but again, so far, nothing. I'm afraid we're going to have to treat this like any other kidnapping, sir. We'll just have to wait till they get in touch with us, and then we can set up arrangements for the swap. If the Dutchman is determined to get me, he will, now or later. If you ain't careful, it could be me and Sally. Now, stop worrying about me, will you? I can take care of myself, but she can't. Look, Mac, I never backed away from a match in my life. I want to tangle with a Dutchman. I was a champ, baby. You're forgetting that. So, if that's the way it's going to be. Hey, Mac, I'm a free agent. There ain't no way that you can hold me here. So you either arrange that swap right now with the Dutchman, or I'm walking out of here and making my own deal with him. And you know I can't. Look, I want that lady of yours back where she belongs. I don't like the company she's keeping right now. I don't suppose this stuff looks as bad as it tastes. I know you're there. I can hear you breathing. How long is this silent treatment gonna last, anyway? I don't suppose I could reach you with a little, uh... You're right. Why bother to make friends? We have no time. I'm gonna be out of here by tomorrow anyway, right? Right? Hello?
is the policeman who accidentally shot O'Neill on suspension, Commissioner. Yes, he Mrs. is. Mrs. McMillan, I know how you must feel, but would you mind giving us a statement? I didn't see anything. I was blindfolded the whole time. They had, uh, st uh, those stocking things over their heads when they kidnapped me. Well, well how, how many men Mrs. were there? McMillan. I don't know, two, uh, two, uh, uh, in the car. I, Mrs. I McMillan. Know, I don't know, Mac, I don't know. Can't, can't we just go home? I don't want to answer anymore. Yes, of course. Uh, Commissioner, is it true that Freddie O'Neill was your only lead in all these recent jewel thefts? Yes, it's true. Uh, I'll give you a statement in a minute. Honey, um, the mayor insists I make a full report. Why don't you go on home and I'll join you as soon as I can? Uh, can we ask her just a few more questions? Not now, not now. She's exhausted. Take her home time, huh? Uh, what about O'Neill? Did he agree to the swap or was he forced into it? He insisted on it, gentlemen. Well, now, wait a minute, Commissioner. We still don't have a... And right. so, a stray bullet by a policeman in the tragic confusion of the swap for Mrs. Sally McMillan cost the battling Irishman, Freddie O'Neill, his life. But we repeat, Police Commissioner McMillan's wife has been safely returned. Thank you, George, for your on-the-spot report. Tonight, in tribute to a real champion, this station is proud to present highlights of Freddie O'Neill's boxing career. This was Freddie's first match as a professional against Kid Larson. He won by a knockout in the fifth round and established himself as a major contender. Within a period of six years, Freddie O'Neill had fought 14 main events. a double shot of hot milk and a little sleeping pill. Something ought to work. Freddie's fans will remember his bout with Vic Armstrong when he scored a spectacular knockout in the seventh round and earned him the shot at the middleweight championship. had a heart of gold and a helping hand for any friend in need. He had great confidence in the young people of today. Whenever he wasn't in training or... Sally. And try Mrs. McMillan for me again, will you please? I just did, sir. The line's still busy. And that's with two phones in the house. She slept all night. She's been talking all morning. I haven't even had a chance to talk to her. Keep trying, Ann. Oh, thank you so much. If you just give me your number, maybe I could call you as soon as the arrangements have been made. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Goodbye. Oh. More telegrams. How many people do you suppose the Irishman knew? Incredible. Who do you suppose they all are? What do they do? Well, this one is signed Sugar Lalure. I can guess what she does. I think they'll all be at the funeral? Well, sure. Everybody loves a fighter. Not many left today. Poor Freddy. He certainly did die the way he lived. I wish there was something I could do for him to really thank him. Well, he'll have a nice funeral. And that's all any Irishman asks of life. Mildred, that's it. We're going to have a wake, a real Irish wake. And we're going to invite all of Freddie's friends. All of them? Even Sugar Lalure? All of them. 
They were all friends of Freddy's, and he would want them there. Listen, Mrs. McMillan, I spotted some pretty well-known gamblers in there and some out-and-out -out gangsters. Well, any friend of Freddy's... Oh, uh, sure, Miss Commissioner McMillan, sure. please. Well, we're not going to put out that silver we polished. Oh, yes, we are. It's going to be a very elegant wake. Yes, Ann? Mrs. McMillan on three. Thank you. Hi, honey. Hi, Mac. You wouldn't believe the telephone calls and the telegrams we've had about Freddie. How are you? Okay. I'm going to be fine, especially now. I've come up with a lovely idea for Freddie. Oh? Mac, we're going to have a wake for Freddie, a real Irish wake, and we're going to have it at our house, and we're going to invite all of his friends. What do you think? Don't say no. Oh, uh, no. I, I was just... Uh... Well, you haven't really met any of his friends, you know. I know, but I've talked to most of them on the phone. The phone hasn't stopped ringing all day. Please, Mac? Well, that's not a bad idea. It's a good idea. Go ahead, begin making plans. Freddy deserves the best. Thanks, Mac. I'll be right home. I have something very important to tell you. And Sally, I think it's a great idea. I knew you'd be pleased, Mac. Bye. We may get our shot at the Dutchman after all. How's that, sir? We're going to have a wake for Freddie O'Neill. Oh. A wake? That's where the casket is open, isn't it? Yes, I know it. Would you please stop crying, Mr. Tipolino? All right, Tippy. I know it was a great loss for all of us. Y your brother. Yes, you know, I had that same feeling myself. Hi, darling. Hi. Oh, uh, no, no, I wasn't. No, I was, uh, um... Your cousin felt the same way, too. Oh. Well, sure, we'd be glad to have them. Here, let me put that down. Okay. Thanks a lot. All right. It was an honor talking to you, too. Okay, Tippy. Bye-bye. Tippy? What are you talking to Louis Tippolino, the restaurant owner? He is such a sweet man. He's the biggest crook in town. Why isn't he in jail? That's how crooked he is. He makes it look legal. Well, I had to invite him to Freddy's wake. He sent such a sweet wife. Oh, Sally. Look, about the guest list. Why do you invite the people we were going to invite to Freddy's party, too? How would you like that? That would be a fabulous idea. Freddy would have liked that. You know, also, I think it'll add a little class to our wake. It's just the way he put it. Our wake could use a little. He put it? Put what? When? Why don't you sit down, Sally? I'll pour you a drink. I don't want to sit down, and I certainly don't want to drink. Freddy's alive. I think I'll sit down. And I'll pour you a drink. I think I'll drink it. What do you mean, Freddy's alive? Our men were using blanks. The whole thing was staged to make it look real. How could you do that? I know. It was a terrible thing to put you through, Sally, but I had to. Couldn't you trust me enough to have let me in on it? Oh, sure. If I'd known where the kidnappers were holding you, I'd have phoned you. You always let me in on everything. You could have given me a signal in the alley. You could have winked. Oh, sure. See? It had to be a perfect performance to fool the Dutchman, and he was out there somewhere watching. You, Freddy, me, all of us. I couldn't risk it after what you'd been through. And the only way to keep Freddy alive was to convince the Dutchman that Freddy was dead. I can understand that. Where's Freddy now? Safe, out of sight, and under police protection. And looking forward to the wake more than anybody, with the possible exception of the Dutchman. Is he going to be there? Well, that's what we're counting on. We'll have mourners wearing diamonds of every shape and size, begged, borrowed, and stolen, probably. With Freddy playing dead and identifying the Dutchman at the same time? We could do it. And we're counting on you, too. Oh, now that I know Freddy's alive, I'll be fine. Sorry I got so upset before. Oh, I can understand that. Oh, Mac, I think I've come up with a clue myself. Yeah? Of course, I couldn't see or hear anything when, when I was hostage, but I could taste. And they fed me a stew that was so awful that if she ever cooked for me again, I know that I could spot her. She? Why do you say she? Why do I say she? Why do I say she? I don't know. You're the one who said it. What are you doing? 
I'm sniffing. Well, I can tell you're sniffing, but why are you sniffing? Perfume. There was perfume everywhere they took me. That's why I said she. Mac, that's it. The Dutchman is a Dutch woman. That's a possibility. Could you recognize that perfume? Odor, please, odor. It's unforgettable. I'll tell you another thing. I was very discreet when I was sniffing. I remember being very discreet. I'm almost sure that no one knew that I was sniffing. Aren't you proud of me? I've cracked a case. Yeah, well, it's a beginning. Your real work comes tomorrow night when you have to sniff your way through that way. Oh, I can't wait to get a look at that woman that would wear that kind of perfume. Oh, her escorts must be drugged by the end of the evening. Well, maybe that's her technique. How would you like to see a little bit of my technique? <laughs> hey? Hey. How are you? Oh. Ah. Let's see. Ooh, it looks so confining. Well, it's soft. How about one for the road? Oh, right? yeah. Hey, do you think you could figure some way to slip me a couple of these while I'm on the road? <laughs> well, this is something I never thought I'd see. Uh, well, it ain't bad. A lot more comfortable than some beds I've been in. I think you look cute. I bet you say that to all the corpses. Well, she does. Except this is the first time a corpse has talked back. <laughs> Are you really comfortable, Freddy? <clears throat> yeah, except I don't know why I had to come in the formal. Oh, that was my idea. Lie down. I'm a little nervous about that mirror. Well, I think it's great. I can see practically the whole room. Sure, you. practically the whole room can see you. What if they catch you breathing? That's why I brought some extra flowers to put all over the top of them. And then I'm going to take these candelabra and put them in close so people can't get close. Good idea. I counted the silver, and I'm going to count it again when the evening's over. Here, Sally. Gotcha. Ready, Freddy? No. <laughs> I hope you're not allergic. You can't call me canvas back now. <laughs> this is one bite you lost. <laughs> you hold on. Thing. Do I get up when the bell rings? You know what? I think it's gonna work. Can't even tell he's breathing. I despise more, the exterior or the interior. I don't mind the house so much as I do the people. It's a whole new breed of parasites. Funeral crashes. This is such a good idea, boss. I mean, the police commissioner's own home? I'd risk anything for Freddie O'Neill. Oh, yeah? I ain't never met no Irishman alive or dead worth going to jail for. I've never seen so much drinking at a party for a live person. Is this your first wake? And my last. I'm going to be cremated. Ladies, be sure and try the crab rangoon. And you there, speed it up with the coffee. Commissioner? Oh. I'd like to take several of these characters in for questioning right now. I know what you mean, Henry. Looks almost as good dead as he did alive. He looks better.
I'll take that. What? A carving set up your sleeve. Oh, I'm with the catering set. I'm with the police commissioner. I have no idea. You're the one that accepted the invitation. It's me. Oh, how many? There lies a man who says he never threw a fight to Freddie O'Neill. Fake and a fraud. Uh, what's your name? Enright, ma'am. Enright, ma'am. Oh, that's a beautiful name. I really like that name. Listen to him. Why don't you gentlemen have a drink in the bar? Oh, anything you say, Commissioner. Uh, excuse me, but um, where do I know you from? Uh, well, I've been working on this picture at Universal. This party's worse than yours. I agree. Mrs. McMillan? Sally, you really must do something about that cold. Oh, Francis, it's just one of those 24 hour bugs. I'm sure it'll be gone tomorrow. Isn't this the most ghastly party you've ever been in? And the people here, are, you know, there's this one dreadful woman who goes around sniffing. Has she sniffed you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, you know, anytime you accept an invitation to a police commissioner's home, you have to be very careful. <laughs> Mrs. McMillan. It's the bee. I the never bee. hoped I'd be lucky enough to find my hostess at all. She's the hostess of this thing? Lengthy. Oh, that's OK. I agree with Miss Sims. This is a terrible party. Well, not really, as wakes go. Well, couldn't we go, John? Uh, you'll have to forgive Lengthy. She's not at her best at parties, or anywhere else for that matter. Well, I think you forgot one thing. Always living in the past, Lengthy. Mm. I uh, hope you haven't lost your interest in mobiles, Mrs. McMillan. I I'd love you to come to my studio tomorrow, if you can get away. I wish I could get away right now. Well, I think we could arrange that, too. Oh, uh, uh, tomorrow would be fine. Good. Shall we say about noon, then? Fine. Bye. Now watch. Doctor, you're not doing your good old one-handed knot trick again, are you? 
But this gentleman begged me to show it to him, Commissioner. He did. <laughs> did I hurt you, fella? Okay, let's go. Hold it, everybody! Hold it! Everybody! Enright, lock the doors. Oh. All right, now, wait just a minute. Let's go. <laughs> All right, everybody, the ladies will go upstairs, please. The gentlemen will stay down here. We know the procedure, Commissioner. Matt, what is the procedure? The procedure? After a fruitless search and a dismal failure, and after the Dutchman has been victorious again, we are going to get smashed. San Francisco's master jewel thief struck again last night, and this time at the home of Police Commissioner Stuart McMillan. Stolen was a pair of earrings valued at $100,000, removed from the pierced ears of Mrs. Frances Miley, wife of the famed financier Carter Miley. The heist took place at the wake of battling Freddie O'Neill, accidentally gunned down by police as he was being exchanged for the kidnapped wife of the police commissioner. A search of all the guests proved futile, and San Francisco's mysterious jewel thief has been successful once again. Great picture. Who turned that on? I think it's been on all night. I bring either of you, you'll pardon the expression, something to eat. Oh. oh, that's where the ice pack is. I was bringing it to you. Oh, never mind. I think if I just sit down, that, that ought to do it. <laughs> oh. I, I, I was watching the late show. Excuse me. Goodbye, Doc. Good heavens, I'm late for surgery. Who was that? Just another guest who didn't know when to leave. Oh, 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 I'm never giving another party. I can't get that clock in focus. I can't even get you into focus. I don't know what time it is. Ah, oh, I told John Thomas Clark that I'd drop by his studio for a lesson in mechanical mobiles at 12 o'clock. The way your hands are shaking? Well, it's modern art, Mildred. I think shaking hands could be an asset. Yeah, but first, you've got a morning of sniffing ahead of you. Oh, Mac, even my nose has a hangover. I'm sorry, Sally, but your nose is the only clue we've got. No, this isn't it. Madam, if you could just be a little more specific. Well, that's all I can tell you. You know, you've already sniffed $30 worth. Mac? You find it? No, darling, could you please pay this lady $30? Oh, hi, Mac. Hi. Oh, well, seeing it's you. We're such old friends. No charge. Has she always been this reasonable? <laughs> oh. No. Uh, well, uh, this is... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This is very new and quite unique. Uh, I'm not the regular girl here, you know. No, this isn't it, but it's very nice. Uh, Do you have anything else? Uh, uh just a moment. Just here, try these. Oh, this is very unusual here. Is it? No. What's this called? Oh, dear. That's my medicine. Oh. You know, maybe I should try to... 
find you somebody with a little bit more experience. Oh, um, if you could just describe to someone who knew exactly what you wanted, then, uh, just a moment, please. Isn't she cute? I like her. Yeah, but she does seem a little incompetent. I know, but I like her because she doesn't know you. <laughs> Can I help you? I... Oh, hi, Mac. Ah, uh, yes, what we wanted was someone with a little more experience, huh? May I help you, sir? Oh, hello, Mac. It's nice to see you again. Oh, no, no, that's not for you, honey. Why don't you try some of this, huh? I don't think we'll find anything here, Mac. Wait a minute. What is this? This is it. This is the odor. This is a man's cologne. I know. That's what's so strange. I thought it was a perfume. It turns out it was a cologne. I'll take that bottle, please. Charge it. We're on to something. Freddy. Freddy, no. wake up. Wake oh. up. Oh, hi, Mac. Ooh, I wish I were dead. Well, I don't think I could live through another way. Here, smell this. Mm. Why, why do you, you want me to smell like Bull Dunham? Bull uses this cologne, doesn't he? He did that day at the Springs. Do you know where he's staying while he's in the city? He said he was at uh, Rocky's. Rocky's gym? Uh, uh, Mac, is that the, the smell that Sally was looking for? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> you think Bull is the Dutchman? No, he's not that bright. But he could be working for the Dutchman or something. I'll go over to Rocky. Nah, well, you know, if, if Bull thinks that you're pumping him, he'll just forget how to talk. I'm going to tell him how thoughtful you were to remember him in your will. That bum after he insulted me at my own wake? Ow. Freddy thought a lot of you, Bull. Ah, oh, the poor guy. One of the last things he said, he wanted to give you his boxing gloves. The first pair he ever used. He wanted to give them to me? Yeah? Yeah. I'll mail them to you down in the springs. Yes, well, uh, I'll hang them on the wall in the massage room. I'll put a picture of Freddy up there, too. Hey, Freddy would like that. I'm gonna miss that ball. Yeah, we all are. Nice cologne, Paul. Hey, lower your voice, will you? I've been taking enough resin from the bumps in here about this smell. Oh, I like it. You do? Yeah. Where can I buy some? I don't know. Anyway, if you want some, I'll ask Mr. Clark where he gets it. Mr. Clark? Hey, you know, the sculptor guy. Oh, John Thomas Clark. Oh. Present? The last time he was down in Springs, he just brought it down. When was that, Bull? At the same time you... Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is it you want, anyway, Mr. Commissioner? You know, I... well, one of the first things I want is to put you under arrest, Paul. Hey, nice swing, fella. Got a manager? All you need All is... All I need is a phone. It's little more than a trade these days, created by the demands of the marketplace. Art is nothing but a business. Well, a very good one for you. This is a fantastic studio. Yes, it is very well equipped. How do you like my latest monstrosity? Electrically run. I call it Cycle of Life. The title alone doubles the price. <sighs> You like my cologne? Yes. Do you know that I have been looking for that scent for my husband? Isn't it a coincidence that you happen to have it on? And last night at the wake, were you looking for it then, too? Last night? Lanthe told me you were sniffing all evening. I assumed you had a cold. Now I realize you didn't. No, I do. <laughs> I 
thought it was one of those 24-hour things, you know, but I, I guess I'm going to have it for a while. Maybe I better go before I expose you, you know? Well, Mrs. McLennan, I suspect I'm already exposed. You're the Dutchman. I'm the Dutchman. Uh, how do you do it? I mean, I mean, what, what, with, what with all those detectives looking at the safe and everything? Illusion, my dear. Like my mobiles. You think you see something when you don't. No one saw me take the diamond at the party because I didn't. I took it just before the party, when I came to install the mobile. But society creates its own heroes. Everyone wanted to believe that I could open a safe in full view of a crowd. That excited them tremendously, and so they believed it. Oh! Hands with you, Frank. I know what you mean. My hands were bandaged for a month after my fight with Stonehead Kelly. Oh, yeah? Stonehead Kelly? That's how I got the bandages. Oh. You better give me a big hug, Freddie, because I think my man's going to be out of action for the next couple of weeks. Uh, may I? Oh, yeah. Oh, I think that's my cab. We're going to miss you, Freddie. Have a good time, Lucky Key. Oh, I will. I spent several weeks on the cuff with Muggsy. He's first class. It ain't such a bad life, sweetheart. Oh! <laughs> Dropped your guard again. <laughs> Stay well now. Bye, Freddie. Aloha. Bye. Isn't Freddie great? We're really gonna miss him. Do you really mean that about my being out of action for weeks? Well, Mac, it is a little tricky with bandages on your hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look, Ma. No hands. Looks good. Mm -hmm. 